made camera sales were up a solid 17% over 2022 and 19% over 2021. While 2023 didn't start off so positive, thanks to a multitude of new and exciting camera releases, 2023 is trending upward, but are sales strong enough to show positive growth throughout the end of 2023? Stick around after this short break for all the details. But first, please do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, but most importantly, please subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything and really does help this channel grow. And it also keeps you up to date on the latest camera news and rumors. Camera sales have been steadily declining since 2012. And ever since 2019, the camera market has shrunk even further due to various economic reasons. And while 2023 is trending in the right direction and is reporting better sales than 2022 and 2021, sales have collapsed when compared to 2019, the last year before, well, you know what. While sales in May are up 17% over 2022 and 19% over 2021, if we go back to 2019, we can see that, well, camera sales are, well, a shadow of what they used to be. May 2023, while it's looking very, very positive here, is, well, only 72% of where it was just four years ago in 2019. 72% of where it was. 2019 was a pretty good year. And in fact, 2019 looks like it was a terrific year when we compare it to the last four years. But if we go back to 2012, well, 2019 was pretty low. That isn't to say that 2023 is a horrible year. Yes, it started off in an absolutely abysmal way, despite having two big camera announcements in late 2022. And that's the Sony A7R5 and the Canon EOS R6 Mark II. But apparently they didn't produce enough sales, at least in January, to take the camera market out of the basement. And neither was February looking that good or even March, but things definitely started to improve. Now we did have the Panasonic S5 Mark II and the S5 Mark II X, which came just a few months later. And this was rather significant because this was the first Panasonic camera to do away with contrast detect depth from the focus autofocus system. I, I used to say that an awful lot, but since Panasonic's moved away from it, every time I say it now, it almost seems like it's way too many syllables to enunciate depth from defocus. Uh, I said it wrong. Contrast detect depth from defocus autofocus system. It's way too much of a mouthful, but that gave us a boost in January. And then, of course, we got the Nikon Z8 announced May the 10th that started shipping on the 25th. Huge sales there. I expect June to pick up because of that as well to ride those coattails. But still, if we look at the big announcements that we did have so far this year, I wouldn't have expected the market to start off so badly. So why is that? Well, the good news is a lot of the supply constraints are out of the way. Look at the Nikon Z8. Pretty well everybody that pre-ordered the camera on announcement day, well, has already received it. And yes, there are some back orders right now, but they're pushing, they're, they're getting a lot of cameras out there. They're making a lot of cameras. Same thing with Canon. Canon's caught up with the, the R7, the R10, the R6 Mark II. We're seeing a lot of those supply chain problems. They're being, well, resolved. And that's really good news. We're seeing a lot of the problems in the market going away, but we have some other market issues. We have inflation, which is, is running away in many countries. Well, I, I, run away is the wrong term. We have high inflation. And at least here, right now, inflation has dropped down to 3.4%. In other countries, it's starting to get under control. But when you jack up interest rates when inflation is high, not only are we dealing with high inflation, but we're dealing with high interest rates. We're paying more on our debt. We're paying more on our mortgages. And heaven forbid, if you're having to deal with credit card, get what, credit card debt, that's a huge impact as well. But we're also dealing with high food prices. We're dealing with high rent and leasing rates or home ownership rates. And when we look at all of this together, despite cameras, at least in the United States and Canada, they haven't gone up. In fact, they've gone down in price since 2020. And now I'm hearing from England and other countries in the world that we're seeing discounts on cameras to where they're cheaper than they were in 2020 which is a relief when we compare this to other products in the market, cars and whatnot, food. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're seeing fewer sales because what people are trying to do is they're trying to, well, hold off making big purchases. They're trying to work with what they've got because they're dealing with all these other problems. And when everyone's dealing with high inflation, like you, when we're dealing with a higher price for goods, well, people aren't buying as much. So even if you are being able to hold off buying that next new camera, what you're having to deal with is people that don't want to spend money. 
people that are holding back, people that are using their own phones and cameras and friends for shooting weddings and other events. This is a challenging time. But from everything I can tell from all the sources that I have, what they're telling me is that the second half of this year is going to be a big year. Now, the first half was already rather interesting. We, again, we had the Panasonic, the S5 Mark II. We had the Nikon Z8. We had several other cameras in there. And yes, Sony released the ZV E1. But I really think, I really do expect that 2023 is going to be big. And we're supposed to be getting an announcement of the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. And if the specifications are right online there, that's going to be a huge seller. But what I'm afraid of, well, it's not really a fear, but when it comes to 2023 sales, if we get an announcement like the R6 Mark II the first week of November or even late October, they probably won't start shipping till late December or even into January, and that's going to do nothing to help 2023 sales. But if we get the R5 Mark II earlier in the year and we get a Panasonic, let's say, S1H Mark II, we get the Sony A9 III, we get a whole bunch of other cameras that people are looking forward to, or even the Sony A6700, which is supposed to be coming out July the 10th, then I think there is a potential to see 2023 at least doing better than 2022, 2021, or even 2020. And 2020 was a pretty good year because for most of that first part of the year, we already had inventory, we had parts, and camera companies were able to produce, although there was still a bit of a disruption to their lineup. The Canon EOS R5, the Sony a7 III were two big cameras that year that really picked up second half results. So if you want to stay up to date on all the latest news and rumors, specifically what's happening with the camera market, camera sales, or the next big new camera coming out in the second half of 2023, well then go ahead and subscribe, but make sure you also choose all notifications. And for all those minor news and rumors, then go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I also tweet out pricing information. And for those of you that say Twitter's useless, it doesn't serve any purpose, I can tell you it definitely does because, you see, on YouTube, I can only put out three videos a day. And after that, YouTube doesn't notice, notify my customer base, whereas Twitter, I can tweet to my heart's content. And I know Twitter's bit kind of like the high school locker room. Everything goes, but what I use it for on my channel is to basically tweet out news and rumor stories, all those stories that, well, they aren't quite big enough to have their own separate video. And plus pricing information. Right now, we're seeing a huge amount of deals on the Canon EOS R5, $500 off with a free battery grip, valued at around $300 to $350, which at $33.99, you take into account that battery grip, you're basically getting the camera for $3,050. Nikon, Z6 Mark II, Z7 Mark II, $300 and $400 off respectively. The S1H, $500 off. The Canon EOS R3, $500 off. Various lenses and accessories also on sale. And Angelbird just announced a one terabyte CF Express Type B card for a staggeringly low price of $299 with 1.3 gigabytes per second. It's, I know we've got high inflation. I know that things are costing a whole lot more, but I feel like I'm in this protected universe of cameras where we're not seeing huge price increases. And I know there are parts of the world where we're seeing high price increases, but this is not so much due to inflation, but due to exchange rates, foreign currency. And I'm not going to get into all that now, but yeah, there are some countries that you're actually paying a little bit more. But still, I'm hopeful for 2023, and I'm excited to what we might see in the second half. And I expect August, things will start to heat up, and then, well, get your seatbelts on. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you're in the United States, if you're in the United States, let's say that properly, have yourself a happy and long weekend. Or I guess it's not a long weekend. It's coming up on, what is today, the 3rd? So today is Monday. So it's Tuesday. You might be having a long weekend. Have yourself a happy Independence Day. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.